Labour Party are in the process of electing a new leader. You're going to be part of that process. Every trade union member is going to get a vote and every CW member will be part of that process. In September the result will be announced and the Labour Party will have a new leader here in the House of Commons and in the wider country. As part of that process, the union's held a hustings meeting, we've listened to the five candidates, the union has made its decision, it's nominated and it's supporting Ed Balls for leader of the party. I went and met all the candidates. Uh, we, we had a hustings where we listened to all the candidates and we examined their record and what they were saying. We, and uh, we asked Ed Balls questions about the sectors in which we've got members, financial services sector, telecom sector and of course the postal sector. And Ed Balls responded positively to all those questions. So Ed Balls not only has got the tenacity and the toughness to lead the Labour Party and take on Cameron, he's also got the policies that are going to get Labour back in government. Now, this is an opportunity for you to hear Ed Balls himself talking about those issues that matter to you. On the post office, on telecom and on wider issues including the British economy. I think the Royal Mail is a vital public service and I think the British people are really proud that wherever you are in the country, from Land's End to John O'Groats, for the same price, the letters arrive and they're properly delivered. It's a service upon which you can rely and that's because that ethic of public service is right there in um, the whole of the postal service. The idea that you'd take a risk with that, that you'd privatise it, I think people will say, no, that's not what we want. Of course we need new investment, of course there has to be change, but let's do it together and let's do it uh, in a way which keeps this a vital public service, which is what I think people want. The Labour Party said clearly that, uh, uh, in our manifesto we'll keep the post office in public ownership and these Tory Liberal plans to privatise it, I think that's wrong and in Parliament Labour MPs will all lead the charge to say no we oppose this, we will support a three line whip in Parliament so that we can keep the post office public because look the important things we want to do, the universal service, also new ideas like the post bank, they'll only happen if we keep this a public service, that's Labour's promise and we must make sure we deliver it. I think that high-speed universal broadband is, is vital, not just for jobs in the economy, but also for fairness in our society in the years ahead. If you think back to the 19th century, the railways were vital for our industrial revolution. In the 20th century, it was the universal postal and telecoms network. In the 21st century, it's about broadband, because if you're running a business, you've got to be online and accessing high-speed um, internet access. But for families as well, if you're not on the internet, it's very hard to follow your kids' learning, to be able to shop and get the best deals, to find out what's going on. If you haven't got those chances, then it's um, a second-class deal for you. That's really unfair. In order to avoid a, a digital divide, to have the jobs we need in this 21st century digital economy, there must be universal broadband. So I say, let's make it happen, and that will require government leadership, investment and regulation to get there. But it's the only way to have a fair and strong economy in the 21st century. And I think it's vital that Labour leads the way. The Conservatives and Liberals say it's Labour's fault, this recession. And they say these cuts, it's unavoidable, we've got to do it. It's really important that we say as a party on both fronts, you are wrong. First of all, that we had lower debt than America, France, Germany, Japan. The reason for the crisis was a global financial crisis, not caused by a Labour government or public service workers, but caused by financial irresponsibility by the banks. But secondly, the idea that now, just when the economy is recovering, the right thing to do is to cut public spending, that there's no choice. That's what Margaret Thatcher said in 1980. It's what Ramsay MacDonald said in 1931. Both times they were wrong. What actually happened was unemployment went up. The deficit got worse. The economy was depressed. And what that meant for, was for individual families all around the country, their jobs at risk, their services cut, the economy unstable. Look, we've got to learn from our history, not just repeat it. That's why Labour must say there is an alternative. Yes, cut the deficit, but do it more slowly. Don't make a crazy decision to cancel 700 schools, to disappoint thousands and thousands of children and lay off hundreds of thousands of construction workers in the private sector. That's economic madness. If we need to raise taxes, which we do, do it not through an unfair VAT rise. Start the top rate of tax at 100,000. That's a much fairer way to do it. But above all, don't fall for this idea that cutting public spending now is inevitable. It's the wrong choice, it's the bad call, it's a conservative liberal policy. Let Labour say 
there is an alternative, we've got it, and it's an alternative for a fairer Britain for the future. Because, um, look, I know why we lost, because I saw it in my constituency in a tough campaign over the last 18 months. And too many people said to us, look, I've always been Labour, and um, I know you're sort of on our side, but frankly, you've not delivered for us. And, you know, on tuition fees, on proper terms and conditions at work, on social housing, people were saying, look, it's an 18-month queue for my daughter to get a house. Uh, you're making it more difficult for my child to go to university because of tuition fees. My wages are being undercut because there's a new shift, and why is that happening? And we didn't have proper answers to those things. And unless we can answer those things and show we're on people's side, we can't get back into power. And it's not the case that it was that we lost the higher income voters, it was actually lower middle income Britain, from the mill towns to Stevenage to the Kent Medway towns, where people were saying, you're not doing enough for us. Now, I fought a campaign and I won because I knew that I had to listen to those things, I had to be able to talk the language of um, the voters in my constituency. And I'm determined to make sure that in everything we're doing, on jobs, on the funding of education, on the health service, we do deliver for the people who rely upon us. That's why I'm saying, don't cut public spending now, invest in jobs. It's why I'm saying, don't cancel these new schools now, people want new schools for their children. It's why I'm saying, don't have tuition fees, let's have a graduate tax, which is a fairer way to do things. It's why I'm saying, on the NHS, let us fight this, in my view, biggest assault on the NHS in the last 60 years, which the Conservatives and the Liberals are doing. And if we can show that we do those things with, with tenacity, that we're actually on the side of people who rely upon us, if we can get party members and trade union members out with us, saying in the pubs and clubs at the doorstep, but also at the school gates, look, the people standing up for us are Labour, then we can win again. And that's what I've done, it's what I know how to do, and that's what I want to do for Labour. Well, look, we're choosing both a leader of the opposition and also a potential prime minister. And it's really important to have somebody who has got the confidence and the strength to take the argument to the Conservatives and the Liberals and say, on jobs, you're wrong, uh, but also on cutting school building, on what they're doing to the NHS, that you just got this badly wrong, it's unfair. And I think I've shown, not just on the economy, but also on public services, that I can do that. But at the same time, it's also about choosing a prime minister. And that's about, it's about judgment. It's about showing you can make the right calls. And um, I did that on, for example, us not joining the single currency earlier in the decade, which was definitely the right call, even if it was not a popular decision to take at the time with many of my Labour colleagues. It's also about being a campaigner. I fought a very difficult constituency in the last election. And I showed that if you actually get out there on the doorstep in public meetings, work very closely with party members, with trade union members, uh, even in the face of millions from Lord Ashcroft, you can win and we can defeat the Conservatives. And uh, I did that. But to do that, I also had to be able to speak the language, not just of business leaders or finance ministers, but also of mums and dads and, and workplace colleagues. And that's very important because David Cameron, Nick Clegg, they don't really talk the language of people in our country. They're not really in touch. We need a Labour leader who can show they are in touch and can do it in that way. And finally, we need somebody who is um, who's passionate about politics and um, passionate about Labour. I'm somebody who said very loud and clear, you know, I'm proud to be financed by trade union support. Um, I'm very proud of the Labour Party and the Cooperative Party movement, of which I'm, I'm part. And also, look, my dad uh, came from a working class community in Norwich. He was the first generation from a widowed family to go to university. That was only made possible because the post-war Labour government made that happen. And um, that commitment to social justice, that desire for that to be possible, not just for some children, but for every child and every family and every community, that's what's driven all the things I've done on the economy and jobs, on education, um, on campaigning hard to get more support for disabled children and their families, which was something I was um, very involved in the last few years. It's all about, in the end, saying there's no barrier too great to overcome, which gets in the way of a child being happy and doing well or an adult having a fair chance if we work together to make it happen. But you've got to believe in government. You've got to believe in social justice. I've shown I've got the judgment to make the right calls, but also I can take the fight to the Conservatives and the Liberals. And if we don't do it that way, we'll not get back into power. And you know, if Labour's not in power, then we can't deliver for the people who we are there to serve. So that's why I'm standing for Labour leader.